What happens when you take 13 of Saskatchewan's best and most creative chefs? Along with a room full of local celebrities from the worlds of arts, politics and entertainment. and introduce them to 17 dedicated organic farmers and the exceptional products they produce. Well, you might just get yourself an invitation to Dining with the Stars. Lauren, how you doing? Hi, Ken. How's it going? Excellent, excellent. Well, the snow is... <laughs> yeah, the snow's not so excellent, but... but the, uh, it's all right. It makes it even nicer in here. It does. Christmas. And have I've got some coffee here for you. Oh, boy. That's great. Take the chill off. Here, let me take your... I'll throw it over here. I kind of uh, gone back to my heritage. I grew up on a cattle ranch, and uh, and I want... I'm kind of... Uh, I, I'm promoting cowboy culture, basically, and plays that I do, but mostly with this cowboy poetry going around the countryside. My first poem is called The Missouri Coteau, and, uh, uh, and it's set around a campfire with the, the, the cook uh, there, you know, and the, and the guy says something about, uh, uh, you know, uh, Donnie's, uh, we'll say Lawrence, if you like, <laughs> but uh, uh, it talks about the, what, what the food that he's missed, this cowboy's come back to the hills after being drifting the world for 30 years or something like that and he can't and he misses the food more than anything so he comes back to this campfire cookout that they got on a you know with a chuck wagon up there in the hills at night and it's just it sets a tone and a uh, a, a mystique for uh local product or uh you know uh, like life on the range food from the range basically so uh so you might want to consider you know i could i could probably do that piece Oh. Mm. So I was thinking it would might be kind of fun if we built our menu around the cowboy theme. That's a great idea. You mean like a chuck wagon uh, dinner or yeah, or just a, to a, a, back to yeah, those yeah, times yeah, and a, yeah, outdoor cooking that and, kind of thing. And it kind of fits with the food that we serve at the Fainting Goat, which tends to be rustic and yeah. I don't like to to over fancify the food. I like it. Oh, I think it's a great food, idea. So. Great idea. So wait, wait, might you have a game like a buffalo or a, a bison rather or uh, yes, venison? I, or that? I was thinking bison, bison or beef, it's, it's up yeah, to you. Yeah. Um, we can get uh, organic bison and or beef, so what, what would you prefer? Uh, well, actually I favor bison. I, I, uh, I've, I've uh, written poems about beef and the importance of beef, but in fact... Uh, uh, over your, especially as the uh, the Saskatchewan product has come on to uh, in, into the market, I um, if I'm going into a restaurant or something and they've got bison, on them, I'll try that just to see what's going. Just like I tried the goat when you, <laughs> <laughs> when you when you opened your place yes. here, I was it was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds ac excellent. Um, now, how would you see? Um, how would you like to have this bison served? Well, uh, uh, I'm kind of partial to uh, uh, stew pie, like uh, 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 or buffalo and biscuit uh, kind of pie. That Aww. idea. Uh, I don't know if you can do something like that, but uh, it's, it it tastes to me of the open range, and, you, and then you get the uh, you know organic uh, uh, whole grain wheat in there too, and yeah. things like that. Well, I'm thinking maybe if we took the bison and we braised it in some organic beer and, you know, and maybe the biscuits will either serve them, we can either serve them on the side. Well, the biscuit is a ref just a reference to the pie, really, cover, but yeah, But sure. the pie cover, I can yeah. put it on top too. Yeah, no, that, that could work. Okay, so, and then <laughs> we'll put some root vegetables in there, some carrots. I've got some wonderful parsnips. Absolutely. That sounds good. Yeah. Fruit vegetables. Great. Well, that. How about squash? Got any squash available? Uh, oh, I like do. Um, 
how about, what if we do a soup with the squash? That'll soup be our opener. Ooh. Is that good? Butternut squash? Butternut squash soup. Wow. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe I've, I've got some wonderful beets, that maybe we do a beet salad, yeah. and got some organic pea shoots. Yeah, mix. yeah, yeah. Maybe a little cheese of some sort, maybe a goat cheese or something. Goat so, cheese, perfect. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so a beet salad. And I've got a very nice raspberry wine that we're going to be pairing it with. So I think that might, it's sweet and tart, so it might pair yeah, quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. Where's that come from? That you know? comes from Living Sky Winery. Oh yeah. So again, grown in the province. Uh, this is made out of raspberries, and uh, we'll be featuring those wines. Jeez. Yeah. And maybe an accompaniment for the bison and biscuit pie. We do something with um, incorporating our local wild rice. Yeah. Do you like oh. wild rice? Oh, I love wild rice. Yeah. Yeah. Lentils. And then to refer back to the poem, some beans, some organic beans. I think I've got some organic cranberry beans actually downstairs. Or yeah, yeah. Like that, Try to go for something a little exotic like that. It yeah. might be good rather yeah. than just, you know, brown baked beans, which yeah. are... Yeah, so no, that sounds okay. fantastic. Oh, or maybe I'll just do a little thing of exotic baked beans. Yeah, something like that. Okay, that certainly gives me food for thought. Mm -hmm. And then um, for dessert, uh, we've got some organic prairie cherries. I've also, from mm. up north, got um, just just recently some highbush blueberries and highbush cranberries. So I was thinking... Wild. Wild. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about maybe a dessert with that? Like. Well, how could you go wrong <laughs> with something <laughs> like that? What would I think about it? <laughs> Save an extra portion for me, okay? <laughs> well, for sure. Um, or Sask Saskatoons too, you know. You can, you can, uh, too. You can, uh, I'll just do a prairie fruit yeah, yeah, yeah. pie. A yeah, pie, yeah, yeah. That was that's what a great idea. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in. We've got our menu now. We've got our night set. Uh, all we need is you and your cowboy hat and your poem. Okay. We're good to go. incredible uh, kind of concept that uh, uh, the restaurant and the company, the um, uh, sorry, the um, Saskatchewan uh, Organic Directorate has put before us. Um, so a, a cowboy blessing is appropriate. May the rain fall on your pastures, and your grass grow belly high, your calves grow fat and sassy, and none of your cows be dry. May your horse be sure-footed and blessed with good cow sense. May your neighbors lend a hand when you have to mend a fence. May the sun shine on your crops when you harvest in the fall. May your handshake be considered your word by one and all. And if your life is filled with happiness or when it's sad and gray, may those you love be with you to share each blessed day. My name's Dan Morton. Um, I'm the head chef here at the Faint and Goat. Uh, Lauren's the executive chef and owner, and she's going to be handing out our amuse bouche for t this evening. Um, it's a uh, it's a uh, chickpea hummus with uh, spelt and lentil in it. Um, that's wrapped in a whole wheat pita, and that's garnished with uh, some Brunoise red peppers, uh, black sesame seeds, and uh, Pea shoot leaf. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to just yeah. quickly make it disappear. And then, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
in my position as the media coordinator for the Food Miles Committee, which is part of the Saskatchewan Organic Directorate, um, my, one of my mandates was to create awareness of local and organic food around the province. And to that end, I did a number of other little things, of websites and directories and attending events and all those things that are typical. But I had one project in mind called Dine with the Star that I thought would uh, potentially bring um, more attention to the issue. And here is the uh, official celebrity of the occasion. <laughs> no, I'm hard pressed to explain why. Um, uh, but you'll hear more from me later on. I just think it's, uh, I think it's a wonderful concept. Uh, when uh, Marion first called to talk about this uh, idea as a, as a fundraiser um, for the directorate and their programs, I thought, I've got to take part in that. So I'm here uh, as a volunteer, really, helping to promote organic, local, food production. This is happy the kind of event that we're most happy to be hosting. Uh, and, you know, it just pleased as punch. Did I really say that? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, acorn squash puree soup. Uh, it's made with a little bit of cream, um, parsnips and carrots from D&D, uh, &D, and uh, it's just uh, very basically seasoned with salt and pepper. But we've also included some of the wine that uh, you have in front of you, the Lucen Brothers Riesling. Uh, that just gives a, bit of, a little bit of apple flavor to it and helps bring out some uh, acidity in the squash. Brings out some of the sweetness too. So, enjoy. Fantastic. Really Is it just oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was talking to you in general. <laughs> 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 well, it's all entertaining. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, dear. It's really good. It's like that stuff out of the box. Uh, so much better. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like the stuff that we buy? Yeah. It's like that non real. It's made with real stuff here. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, you poured it on the containers. Yeah. Useful yeah. 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 I love that. It's more than a little bit mm -hmm. While this is going on, and I think our next course is going to be a uh, salad, um, I'm going to ask our celebrity to take the floor and do a little bit more of his poetry or whatever else he would like to contribute at this point, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> well, I, I, you never know what's going to come out of me when you ask me to, to attend and so say true. things, you know, but, uh, uh, but uh, my mic. <laughs> uh, as you said earlier, I've written a lot of different uh, things in my, in my life, uh, including uh, lectures at the university, but um, uh, but uh, 10 or 12 years ago, I started uh, taking interest in my own roots, which is uh, rural Saskatchewan, uh, cowboy culture. I grew up in the, in the uh, shade of the Missouri Plateau, out, uh, south of Moose Jaw there, and uh, that's where I learned to ride and to chase cattle around. But I left that at the age of 17 <coughs> because it was cold, hungry, uh, kind of dirty work that I was doing for the most part. And uh, so I went on to Toronto to become an intellectual. <laughs> uh, and I'm now returning to my roots, and one of the ways that I'm doing it is through celebrating kind of a frontier culture, particularly cowboy culture. I've, I've taken quite an interest in cowboy uh, poetry, and also uh, this last summer, uh, cowboy theater. We're running uh, uh, along the Capel Valley uh, a, sh a show, an outdoor drama on horses uh, called The Spirits of the Trail. It's about the story about uh, Walsh and uh, Sitting Bull in the uh, 18, uh, late 1870s in the Northwest Territories, of course, as schedule existed. Anyway, that's just to bring you up to date on what I'm doing. <coughs> and I'm going to, uh, uh, actually, uh, I'm going to see what you think of this poem. This is, uh, I wrote this for the Cattlemen's Association, really. Um, as you know, uh, cowboys, it's, it's almost, it's impolitic to say anything against beef, but, um, <laughs> Uh, in working with the menu, I actually indicated a preference for game meat, uh, particularly bison, if it was available here. So that's why we're having bison on the menu. We'll get to that later. <laughs> this is called, Here's the Beef. I wrote this. I, does your, everybody remember the BSE crisis? 
Okay. Get a free drink for anybody who could tell me what BSE stands for. Bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Oh, <laughs> I knew there'd be a smart <laughs> ass here. <laughs> Bovine spongiform encephalopathy. He did it. So, I owe you a drink. <laughs> it's on its way. <laughs> uh, <coughs> which almost devastated, almost ended the Canadian uh, beef uh, growers uh, industry. They, they were near collapse when this, and it wasn't a medical problem at all. It was a political problem that came from our fellow cattlemen in the South. So I thought I could write a piece that was political in this way, uh, promoting beef. And more and more of our producers have to do this. So it's called Here's the Beef. <coughs> the taste of cow is what I crave when I'm fixing to chow down. Of all the food in our fair land, it's beef that takes the crown. So KD can take a hike with your Brussels sprouts and beans. I'll take the beef, my luscious beef, and cut the sirloin lean. Last night I brought some T-bones out, fired up the charcoal grill, when my mother-in-law, <coughs> a vegan type, says, how many calves did you kill? And how do we know this didn't come from those dreadful, insane cows that shocked Japan and put the fear in our neighbors to the south? She says, uh, I joined up with Oprah Winfrey, Save the Cattle Guys. We're raising heck across the land to halt this bovicide. Well, my head spun out, my knees went weak, my guts began to crunch. If I didn't answer in her face, I, I'd be eating tofu lunch. <laughs> My kids awaited my reply. Their faces froze with fright. Their supper would be chlorophyll, lest I put their granny right. Well, she weren't the type to give a darn about the workings of the range. She weren't the um, uh, grass. She weren't that fond of grassland life, and she fair gave us all the mange. So I put my head in thinking mode. Um, had to show her common sense or get thrown like a greenhorn toad. Now listen, Mom. For muscle strength. Whether you're a senior or a teen, you need the finest common source of iron and protein. It's got riboflavin, niacin, zinc, omega-3, amino acids, thiamine. It's smoking with vitamin D. There's a reason beef is always ranked the first choice of the nation. It's because it's healthy, hearty, wholesome grub, not processed abomination. So KD can take a hike. And Oprah, with her greens, I'll take the beef, my luscious beef, and cut the sirloin. Hi, I'm Bob Belfer, president of RJ Milling. Welcome to RJ Milling. Uh, we sell a variety of flowers, everywhere from wheat flour, spelt flour, rye flour, durum flour, and a little bit of pea and lentil flour. What makes R&J milling unique is that I'm able to grow the grains and also to be able to mill it and then to market right direct to the customer. Uh, once my flour is done, I uh, bag it off into the size that the customer requires, uh, anywhere from a 2, 10, or 20 kg, or into uh, one metric ton totes. And from there it goes into the markets across Western Canada. Well, everybody, <laughs> including the governments, are all looking at a green plan now. And uh, so that, that really wasn't back when I first started. I just uh, had to have my own green plan. And uh, that green plan was to be organic and have that healthy lifestyle, being able to have healthy food, clean air, clean water, and physical exercise in order to keep a healthy body.
right, so you have your entree in front of you there. Um, some of you are digging in, that's great. Uh, served with that is the tank house that Judd talked about. So on the very bottom of the plate, we have a, a lentil and a wild rice pilaf, uh, most of which provided by r j Milling, our friend there, um, as well as the flour for the whole wheat biscuit that's on top. Um, got brown, brown beans, baked brown beans, um, and those are from Norquin. Uh, they're a quinoa company, and they also grow a number of number of other things. And then the stew uh, on top of the bottom half of the biscuit there, we've got Clear Creek Bison and some D&D &D, uh, root vegetables there. Can't help but be curious. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm um, impatient to taste them. Mm -hmm. You don't often find wild rice, I've got to say, in, the, in your average chuck wagon dinner. <laughs> um, but I appreciate the fact that it isn't pure cowboy in that respect. Because uh, it worked, it's worked very well. Nor would you find lentils in your average cowboy meal, i got to say. But uh, I like the change, I like the, the shift upward. Maybe we can make it the, uh, the meal of the future. Yeah, yeah, it could. Sure good to see old Hank again, riding with our crew, along the trail in the big cacho. It's been years since he was through. He left here for the rodeo, and took up tendon bar, and living the life of a vagabond with a banjo and guitar. There's heavy lines across his face, and his eyes seem kind of dull, as if them years he spent down south been etched inside his skull. <clears throat> Boys, says he, I'm tickled green to be sitting by your fire, cause all the fancy bars I've seen can't set a tone no higher. That grub we ate is what I craved each night in every town. Your buffalo and biscuit pie in taverns can't be found. Oh, I've tried your horses Duvers and the bistros of Orleans and all the bins on Broadway, but they can't match Brian's beans. And smart talk, I heard lots. And some courtrooms here and there, but I tell you, men, my learning began when I heard old Bill here swear. As for music, I took in a few big concerts in my days, but I still prefer the steady purr of a crackling pinewood blaze, or the plaintive howl of a coyote prowling through yon aspen woods. That's going to affect the hair in your neck like no soprano could. I've wandered the world, looked to great art. Your Leonardo's and Vince Van Gogh. But if you want to study a masterpiece, you take a sunset on the coteau. Look at it there, all purple and gold against the blue like a robin's egg. No painter I know can capture the flow of those shapes on heaven's lake. Folks talk about the glory and the, the sights of ancient Rome. They line up by the millions to gawk at old St. Peter's dome. But if you seek a vista that will calm your aching eyes, just come up here and stretch out on the land of living skies. And pour me out another cup of, uh, of Lauren's Black as Satan Brew. The cafes I've been drinking late are thin as moose jaw stew. I'll just sit and reflect a bit on the, on the loneliness of bars and the music of the big cartel and the distances of stars. So. Thank you. Was that a true story? Uh, <laughs> uh, True-ish. Based on truth, for sure. Yeah. Everything gets twisted a bit That's when you put it in a poem, you know, or you <laughs> exaggerate certain details. It's got a rhyme. My boots didn't come up. You know, I, uh, it's got a rhyme. Yeah, it's got a rhyme. Final course tonight is our dessert, which is a prairie cherry country pie which comes from, uh, the prairie cherries come from Over the Hill Orchards, which I believe is just outside of town here. Um, in it is also high brush cranberries and blueberries that are picked up near La Ronge. And uh, we have some goat's milk ice cream that is scented with lavender, which comes from uh, Ellen B Farms, which is actually a lot closer than most farms. It's uh, Lauren's backyard. <laughs> so, uh, so is the flower? Well, I really enjoyed um, the conversation. I've learned quite, I've learned a lot, and the food, of course, was excellent. Um, yeah, I guess that's. And I admire the work that has gone on to 
for the organic directory. Uh, great to see that uh, there's restaurants uh, partnering up with local producers to provide such uh, great food. Well, it highlights all the growers we have in the province, across the province, from Larange to the southeast and southwest corners. They've done a great job here of bringing all them together in one meal and also the difference in flavors and being such a huge pulse producer in the province who thought of including lentils and wild rice in a stew that would usually incorporate potatoes. <laughs> I thought it was I yeah. thought it was great. Yeah, really interesting to learn about the uh, the organic directorate and uh, uh, good to see that there's a group out there promoting this type of uh, uh, food uh, uh, food preparation uh, right from uh, right from the farmer's field all the way up into an end user such as what we're doing here tonight and uh, as has been said many times already tonight this food was phenomenal and uh, just an overall great evening makes me proud to be from this province that we have something like this it was a great idea I really enjoyed it so at the beginning of the e evening my husband and I like to know uh, where our food comes from and I like the introductions that the beginning saying where each piece came from and I want to thank you all for inviting me to take part in this uh, really truly original feast of the province and I uh, hope it's a trend that keeps going on and uh, so that we can teach uh, a whole new rising generation that doesn't know enough about the food and what they eat to to value it when they when they take it and uh, I think we're going to make headway present the certificate of appreciation it's awarded to the Fainting Goat and to Chef Lorraine Mentplay in appreciation of their participation in Dying with the Star and in furthering the cause of local and organic food awareness. So uh, we have gifted you a complimentary one-year membership to Salt. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you very much. Well, thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. <laughs> That's good job, guys. Yeah. There we go. Wonderful.